God bless you, brothers and sisters. We are incredibly grateful to bring you the President of the United States as he begins walking across the stage now of the 74th annual March for Life. This event, which has been happening since 1974, has never had a U.S. president attend or speak at the event ever. In other words, the sanctity of life was not worth standing for because it was not politically correct, nor is it now politically correct. But we want to praise God for the fact that he is moving and Godspeed Magazine exists to make sure that you are not left out of all the places that God is moving. God is moving to end sex trafficking in organizations like the Falkirk Center and Yaku Buyen's Eden Pictures and Share Together Now. God is moving to bring China together and people like, like Liu Chao Min, whose Canaan hymns have moved the entire country towards God. God is moving in the largest church sit down in the entire world, which is happening at RCG, RCCG in Nigeria, where more than six million people sit down at once in a service. God is moving in the largest mission trips in the history of the world. And in all these things, we do not want you left out. So we are here and this broadcast today is completely about ensuring that we bring you in to what God is doing. So many of you are in and we do not want the rest of you left out. So enjoy this broadcast as the president addresses this incredibly large crowd. This is the largest pro-life gathering in the world. Praise God for this moment as the president of the United States speaks to glorify God. Next to you and defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land Well, thank you very much, and thank you, Jeannie. It is my profound honor to be the first president in history to attend the March for Life. We're here for a very simple reason, to defend the right of every child, born and unborn, to fulfill their God-given potential. For 47 years, Americans of all backgrounds have traveled from across the country to stand for life. And today, as President of the United States, I am truly proud to stand with you. I want to welcome tens of thousands. This is a tremendous turnout. Tens of thousands of high school and college students who took long bus rides to be here in our nation's capital. And to make you feel even better, there are tens of thousands of people outside that we passed on the way in. If anybody would like to give up their spot, we could work that out. You have a tremendous group of people outside. Thousands and thousands wanted to get here. This is some great success. Young people are the heart of the March for Life. And it's your generation that is making America the pro-family, pro-life nation. The life movement is led by strong women, amazing faith leaders, and brave students who carry on the legacy of pioneers before us, who fought to raise the conscience of our nation and uphold the rights of our citizens. You embrace mothers with care and compassion. You are powered by prayer and motivated by pure, unselfish love. You're grateful, and we are so grateful, these are incredible people, to be joined by Secretary Alex Azar and Kellyanne Conway. Thank you.
And thanks also to Senators Mike Lee and James Lankford, who are here. James, Mike. Thank you, fellas. And Representatives Steve Scalise, Chris Smith, Ralph Abraham, Warren Davidson, Bob Latta, John Joyce, Lloyd Smucker, Brian Fitzpatrick, and Brad Winstrup. Thank you all. And I have to say, and I look at it, and I see it exactly. We have many, many more politicians in the audience, but if you don't mind, I won't introduce them all. All of us here today understand an eternal truth. Every child is a precious and sacred gift from God. Together, we must protect, cherish, and defend the dignity and the sanctity of every human life. When we see the image of a baby in the womb, we glimpse the majesty of God's creation. When we hold a newborn in our arms, we know the endless love that each child brings to a family. When we watch a child grow, we see the splendor that radiates from each human soul. One life changes the world from my family, and I can tell you I send love, and I send great, great love. And from the first day in office, I've taken a historic action to support America's families and to protect the unborn. And during my first week in office, I reinstated and expanded the Mexico City policy, and we issued a landmark pro-life rule to govern the use of Title X taxpayer funding. I notified Congress that I would veto any legislation that weakens pro-life policies or that encourages the destruction of human life. At the United Nations, I made clear that global bureaucrats have no business attacking the sovereignty of nations that protect innocent life. Unborn children have never had a stronger defender in the White House. And as the Bible tells us, each person is wonderfully made. We have taken decisive action to protect the religious liberty. So important, religious liberty has been under attack all over the world and, frankly, very strongly attacked in our nation. You see it better than anyone, but we are stopping it. And we're taking care of doctors, nurses, teachers, and groups like the Little Sisters of the Poor. We are preserving faith-based adoption. And to uphold our founding documents, we have confirmed 187 federal judges who apply the Constitution as written, including two phenomenal Supreme Court justices, Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh. We are protecting pro-life students' right to free speech on college campuses. And if universities want federal taxpayer dollars, then they must uphold your First Amendment right to speak your mind. And if they don't, they pay a very big financial penalty, which they will not be willing to pay. Sadly, the far left is actively working to erase our God-given rights, shut down faith-based charities, ban religious believers from the public square, and silence Americans who believe in the sanctity of life. They are coming after me because I am fighting for you, and we are fighting for those who have no voice. And we will win because we know how to win.
We all know how to win. We all know how to win. You've been winning for a long time. You've been winning for a long time. Together, we are the voice for the voiceless. When it comes to abortion, Democrats is a, and you know this, you've seen what's happened. Democrats have embraced the most radical and extreme positions taken and seen in this country for years and decades, and you could even say for centuries. Nearly every top Democrat in Congress now supports taxpayer-funded abortion all the way up until the moment of birth. Last year, lawmakers in New York cheered with delight upon the passage of legislation that would allow a baby to be ripped from the mother's womb right up until delivery. Then we had the case of the Democrat governor in the state of Virginia, the Commonwealth of Virginia. And we love the Commonwealth of Virginia, but what is going on in Virginia? What is going on? The governor stated that he would execute a baby after birth. You remember that. Senate Democrats even blocked legislation that would give medical care to babies who survived attempted abortions. And that's why I've called on Congress, two of our great senators here, so many of our congressmen here, and called upon them to defend the dignity of life and to pass legislation prohibiting late-term abortion of children who can feel pain in their mother's womb. This year, the March for Life is celebrating the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, which forever enshrined women's rights to vote in the United States and given by the United States Constitution. Such a big event. Today, millions of extraordinary women across America are using the power of their votes to fight for the right and all of their rights, as given in the Declaration of Independence, it's the right to life. To all the women here today, your devotion and your leadership uplifts our entire nation, and we thank you for that. The tens of thousands of Americans gathered today not only stand for life, it's really here that they stand for it so proudly together. And I want to thank everybody for that. You stand for life each and every day. You provide housing, education, jobs, and medical care to the women that you serve. You find loving families for children in need of a forever home. You host baby showers for expecting moms. You make, you just make it your life's mission to help spread God's grace. And to all of the moms here today, we celebrate you, and we declare that mothers are heroes. Your strength, devotion, and drive is what powers our nation. And because of you, our country has been blessed with amazing souls who have changed the course of human history. We cannot know what our citizens, yet unborn, will achieve. The dreams they will imagine, the masterpieces they will create, the discoveries they will make. But we know this, every life brings love into this world. Every child brings joy to a family. Every person is worth protecting. And above all, we know that every human soul is divine and every human life, born and unborn, is made in the holy image of Almighty God. Together, we will defend this truth all across our magnificent land. We will set free the dreams of our people, and with determined hope, we look forward to all of the blessings that will come from the beauty, talent, purpose, nobility, and grace 
of every American child. I want to thank you. This is a very special moment. It's so great to represent you. I love you all. And And I say with true passion, thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you all. Thank you. I have the honor now to be joined by Alan Parker, the president of the Justice Foundation and lead legal counsel for The Moral Outcry, which is an organization that is joining together to reverse Roe v. Wade. Let's hear what Alan Parker has to say about being at the event with the president. What's the yes. security like there at the event with the president? We will never stop because it is All right. <laughs> Incredibly tight security today. It took my group a long time to get through the line. There were helicopters overhead, secret, secure, secret service security everywhere. The president came up in about 12 different armored cars, and uh, but it was a wonderful crowd. People were so glad to see him here. It's a historic opportunity to have the first president of the United States address the March for Life. Uh, one more question. Um, you are still leading the moral outcry to reverse Roe v. Wade. How close are we and how can we get involved to increase your success with the moral outcry? Well, we're still working on the moral outcry petition. In fact, we have the brief with us that we filed at the U.S. Supreme Court on behalf of 200 and. 64,500 signers of the moral outcry petition. It's the largest body of uh, signatures ever before filed with the U.S. Supreme Court in a brief at the Supreme Court. And we also have the largest collection of women's testimony ever filed at a brief with the U.S. Supreme Court, too. So we are so pleased that Godspeed helped us collect those signatures on the Moral Outcry Petition. And if you sign the Moral Outcry Petition at moraloutcry.com, then your name is in footnote five of our brief that was filed at the U.S. Supreme Court. You have taken action through your prayers and your signature, and we're so glad to represent Melinda Thibault, the founder of the Moral Outcry Petition, and all 264,000 signers of the moral outcry petition. Right now, the Supreme Court is reading these briefs. We also represent over 2,000 women hurt by abortion. So pray that the judges read these briefs. We actually put all 4,660 testimonies in the briefs of the Supreme Court. So we know that they're there, and we need you to uh, we need you to pray that the briefs will actually be read. In the next 40 days, we're calling for 40 days of prayer and action. Today is the March for Life, and the oral argument in the Louisiana case where these briefs will, could impact the court is March 4th. That's 40 days. So from today to March 4th is 40 days of prayer, fasting, and action, Jeremy. I mean, you have an amazing platform, an amazing magazine. And Godspeed Mag looks like it's pretty awesome. Uh, Godspeed uh, magazine is a great way to get informed. You have an ear for the right story. He says something awesome about your magazine. And I can tell you, God's going to do something awesome with Godspeed magazine. And you get good content through Godspeed magazine. So it's a win-win. Uh, I'm calling the body of Christ to say we need to support Godspeed magazine. I bless you. And since you bring the gospel of Jesus, Godspeed. Amen. Woo, I like Godspeed. Yeah. What a day. God bless you, brothers and sisters, and thank you for being here with us. 
I pray that you will all comment and talk to us about what you thought, how you feel about a president being willing to speak for pro-life, about Alan uh, Parker. I, I pray that you'll just come to us and engage because the key here is how can we each read, pray, act, and become the story in Godspeed magazine. The key is that we move across this magazine we move across this platform, this app, this online magazine. We move across this platform as a bridge for us individually in the body of Christ to join God in action.